it up. All right. So welcome again to Spiritual Cleansing. And so we're going to dig right on into the word uh, tonight. And this word will be tailor-made for you because that's how God does it. And so we release the word. However it comes out, it comes out. Cleansing is always different uh, every time he releases it. And, but I want to deal with issues of the heart tonight. I just want to uh, talk about repentance, the heart, the soul man, all of those things and about bondages and strongholds and bloodline iniquities and just kind of just flow with the Holy Spirit. However, he brings it out. Amen. So first, let's go to. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus is the greatest teacher ever. Amen. He's the greatest everything. He's the example. He's the model. He's everything. So is the mic good? It's kind of cracking. It's kind of in and out. No, I mean, I was asking. At the battery. Okay. I can take a hand mic. It doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that it doesn't, people don't miss it. Uh, no, nope. hey, we can take our time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. But yeah, the issues of the heart. I just want to uh, discuss those things because we know we're, we're created in three parts, spirit, soul, and body, right? And so we, we believe that when we get saved... Okay, when we're born again, that we have a right to wholeness. However, so however wholeness looks, right? Wholeness is to be healed, is to be delivered, is to be set free. And so that means that in my spirit, the Holy Spirit is there. And then in my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, my intellect, all of those things, right? Wholeness, peace, shalom prosperity the renewed mind i should think like jesus i should be like him and so if my soul is healed and my soul is renewed because we can be healed and still not have a renewed mind yet come on we can get a breakthrough but we need to build ourselves up in the word and then our body the bible says that our body can prosper and be in health too so i really believe that with all my heart i teach wholeness i do my very best to live it and do cleansing myself and all of that because I know that it works and it's real. The testimonies are there, there. The doctor's reports are there. It works. Amen. Because God said we could be whole and we believe salvation is wholeness. It's to, pre to be preserved in totality of my being, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. So Matthew 15 we're going to go there. Let's start in verse 15. The heart of man. This is Jesus speaking. Peter said to him, explain the parable to us. Because if we go back, Jesus is speaking to, his, uh, to the, um, the religious leaders of his day. And he called them hypocrites. Imagine that. Jesus called people hypocrites. He also called them vipers. Oh, Jesus. Yes, he did. Okay. And so Jesus had mercy and compassion with souls and with man, but with the religious sect of his day, he did not. He was, he was moved and he, he many, he corrected them and he rebuked them many times. Right. And so he's talking about this here. Let's go to verse seven. He says, you hypocrite. Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Okay, so after Jesus called the crowd to, to him, he says to them, hear and understand, it is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. And when the disciples came and said to him, he says, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this statement? But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father did not plant shall be uprooted. He said, let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man guides a blind man, both will fall into a pit. 
So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word tonight, that you would just flow and have your way and open our hearts to understanding. So then Peter says to him, explain this to us. And Jesus said, are you still lacking in understanding also? He says, do you not understand that everything that goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is eliminated? But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and those defile the man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, look there, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, that's a liar, slanderers, accusations and slandering and division and discord. There's so many things connected to each one of these things. He said, but these are the things which defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile him. And so when Jesus is teaching this, he's talking about what comes out of the heart. And he, so we know that the heart is your soul. It's your mind, right? And in the soul is your bloodline, okay? Jesus poured out his soul unto death. He poured out his blood. And so these things that traffic the Christian, the believer, even though they get saved, there's still issues in the heart. And some things, some things you have to crucify and kill yourself. Some things need to be uprooted with deliverance, right? These generational iniquities and these strongholds and things that we are born into need to be dealt with. And so we sometimes in church, and I'm going to hit a lot about that tonight, but sometimes when we're church people, we think because we have an anointing or because we have these gifts, right, that we don't got to deal with our stuff. But I'm here to tell you, our stuff will find us out. And in this season, in this season, you got to deal with your root issues. You got to deal with these things. No little patty cake prayer is going to work. You got to uproot these things out of your heart. You cannot pacify the devil anymore. We're, we're in a season right now where God, the church is being judged. Come on now. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord, right? And so is reality. And so we can't patty cake anymore and be deceptive. We have to let God deal with our issues. Come on, right? We can't just wink at things anymore. Well, you know, that's just the way I am. You know, I got my granddaddy's temper, so it's okay. The devil is a liar. It's not okay anymore. I'm easily offended. You know, you just got to no. know you should not be easily offended. We have to get to a place in our Christian walk and in our, in our intimacy, intimacy with Jesus that we be like him. That's why I follow him. I love him. And out of loving him, I'm serving him. And I want to become like him. And so I have to let God deal with the issues of the heart. Amen. And so he says, look, it's not what you're putting in your body. It's what's coming out of your mouth. And so God's helping us. In Hebrews 4.12, we're going to jump right into that. 13. It says, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as a division of soul and spirit of both joints and the marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so he's saying the word's going to judge your heart. And so the counsel of God stands, the word is forever settled in heaven. We can try and change it and alter it because we, our soul is, is wounded and we make excuses. And God's like, no, let me heal your soul and get you delivered so you can be like me. Right? He said, let me deal with those things. And that's what he's saying. The word deals with that. He, it goes down in and it separates and divides. So Jesus knows that which is him and that which is not. Come on. He can see. He knows. He discerns our heart. And then he goes down into the bloodline, down into the marrow, the blood source of us. He, he knows where this iniquity is rooted in your spiritual DNA. He knows it. He can see it. He sees the generations connected. That's why, he sent, that's why the Father sent Jesus to free us. Amen? To become the curse for us. He knew what we were born into. He knew it and he loved us anyway. Deliverance is love. It is love when God uproots your enemy. Come on now. It is love when he heals your body. It is love when we see miracles. Amen. And we get our peace back. And so that word creature means anything, anything that is unlike the nature of Jesus. 
Okay, anything. And we're going to hone in on uh, familiar spirits tonight. But any kind of legal uh, ordinance, any kind of anything in your health, any iniquity, any diseases, any sicknesses in there that shouldn't be in your body anymore. Amen. When we get born again, we don't have to receive evil inheritances. We don't have to receive them. But many times because we get so accustomed to seeing sickness and disease and suffering and everything, we just kind of get used to that. And we say, well, you know, it's, it's okay. I could just go here and take this and do that. But you know what? We can also get healed. Mm -hmm. We can also let the supernatural power of God touch our bodies. Amen. And so, and I'm not against, thank God for doctors, amen. But, but I'm telling you, we can go a little deeper. We can believe God for miracles. And so, we need to, we need to understand what repentance is before I go any further. Proverbs 26, 2 says, like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in, in, um, like a, like a swallow. Let's go there, Proverbs 26. I'm going to, I don't want to misquote it. But a curse causeless shall not alight, is what it's saying. It's saying that a curse cannot just come upon you without a cause, right? Sin doors. Sin that was done to you. Proverbs 26, 2, like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without cause does not alight. That means it has to have a place. It has to have a doorway. I believe that with all my heart. You know, you know when you're walking with the Lord and something kind of comes up or happens or you do something you know you shouldn't do and, and all of a sudden, you know, you got some issues. You got some conflict in your house. Mm -hmm. You didn't have conflict till you opened that door and all of a sudden you got conflict going on. You got division in a marriage or all these things. It's because the enemy has a right to come in and disturb your peace. Okay, sin doors, all of those things. And, and so God wants us to understand what repentance is. Jesus, uh, John the Baptist was the forerunner. He, he preached repentance. But guess what? So did Jesus. Matthew 3, 8, it says, Jesus, therefore, he said, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And so when Jesus began his ministry, that was what he said. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. It's come upon you. Repent. He said the same thing. And so to repent means to change your mind. Mm -hmm. You change your mind. Guess what? And your purpose. You change your mind or your purpose, particularly with reference to accepting the will of God. That means it doesn't matter if my flesh likes that. My, my spirit man now begins to rule my life because whenever you repent of something that you know you shouldn't be doing anymore, a behavior, an attitude, God can come in and guess what? He can deal with, if there's a stronghold, he will deal with it. He will deliver you, right? And if it's just an area of the flesh that you need to crucify, there will be grace for you to kill it. But if you don't repent and come out of agreement with the toxic behavior and the toxic mindset, it's not going anywhere. It won't go. You will have to deal with your will and your soul till Jesus comes and gets us up out of here. I'm telling you, until the perfect one comes, you will have to deal with this human flesh. Paul said you go to war. You got to war good warfare. You got to battle, right? And so you have to come in agreement with the will of God. Mm -hmm. And you know when someone really comes in agreement with the will of God because there is a godly repentance. You see fruit. Jesus said it right there. He said, he said, bear fruit of repentance. So just saying it is not enough. Mm -hmm. Saying it in, with, the, with God knows your heart. And when you repent, he knows when you really mean it. He knows it. And so do the demons. Okay. Second Corinthians seven ten, it says for the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. And so the sorrow of the world, it's a temporal. I feel guilty. Or I feel bad. But deep down in my heart, I know I feel I still feel some justification. This behavior, I still like it. 
I'm not tired of it anymore. I, or I'm not tired of doing it. Uh, I still yield to it. You know what I'm saying? I know that, you know, I'm going to be good for a few weeks, but, you know, I know I'm going to go back to that thing. The devil is a liar. See, that's just, you feel guilty because you got busted. You feel guilty because you got caught. You know, but then whenever, whenever, you know, you go a few more weeks or whatever, you're back doing it again. So there wasn't really a repentance of the heart. Okay. And most of the time, people that have this kind of regret, this kind of um, worldly sorrow, they know in their heart, they're really going to go back to it. They know they can deceive those around them, but they know in their heart that they're going to go back to it. When this opportune time comes, when nobody's looking, I'm right on back up in that. I'm going to go right on back up and do it again. But see, God doesn't want, doesn't want us playing with those things anymore. Come on now. He wants us to come out of those things. He wants us to become like Jesus. Amen. He's helping us. He's helping us. Let's go to Luke 19. See, Zacchaeus, you know the story. Jesus loved what Zacchaeus did. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but the Jesus we read about, that's the Jesus I'm serving right now. Sometimes in the church, it's like there's a different Jesus. You know, let's tell the truth. Sometimes people are like, I'm serving the Lord, but you don't see no fruit. You know, I'm serving the Lord. I'm obeying Jesus. Really? Come on now. We need to understand there is one Jesus. Paul said that we can be deceived and we can have another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11, another gospel, another Jesus. Come on, that's what he said. He said, that, he said look, don't be deceived. Another spirit, he said. Hmm. It's all, a, it's all up in the world today, I can tell you. Luke 19. Let's go to um, when Zacchaeus was converted. That's a good word right there. That word converted means he was changed into another purpose. He wasn't, he wasn't his old man no more. He made his mind up. I ain't that person no more. This is what he did. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, but was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in statue. So he runs ahead and he climbs into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and he came down and he received him gladly. And when they saw it all, began to grumble, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Just like those religious people. Come on. But look here, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus had a change of heart instantly. You don't see him saying a lot of prayers. It was a heart change. <laughs> he said, look, I'm changed my behavior now. I'm not going to go back into that behavior anymore. I'm a new man. I've just met Jesus. I've met him for real. He's coming to my house. He said, I'm giving back. I'm, I'm, uh -uh, I don't want that old life anymore. I talked about this with the apostles, like when people, you know, back in the day, we say that, you know, we're back then when people got saved, you saw a change. There was something happen. I mean, the fear of God was in people's heart when they found Jesus. You know, they didn't want to go back into the world. But today it's like because there's this lawlessness upon lawlessness upon lawlessness and no repentance. So there's this water, watered down salvation Watered down stuff. Come on now, where people just sloppy. But God's like, no, I want the fire of God to be present in your life. You know, he wants the fire. The Lord told me a long time ago, he said, I asked, where are the miracles in the church? How come we don't see many miracles? He said, because my people have too many idols. That's what he said. Plain as I'm talking to you. And it's true. 
So we, we made Christianity this form, this religious stuff. And God's like, no, I'm after the heart of my people. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I'm after the heart of my people. Luke 22. Let's keep walking with Jesus here, and then we'll get into that book. Luke 22. Jesus. The real Jesus. Amen. I want to know him all the more. Mm -hmm. 22. Whatever. Who is the greatest? They were arguing about who was going to be the greatest and all of that. And Jesus looks over at Peter in the midst of this, says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. He said, and you, he said, once you have turned again, and one version says, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, with you, I am ready to go to prison and to death. Mm-hmm. And he said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Right. Jesus already knew Peter. He already knew that Peter was going to deny him. Come on. And so the father reveals to Peter earlier in Matthew 16 that Jesus was the son of God. So guess what? Peter was tested in those words. Mm -hmm. Why was Peter tested? Peter was the one that was revealed. Jesus is the son of God. Really, Peter? It was revealed by the father that he was a son, but now Peter's got to go through some testing. Uh-huh. We think just because we get saved, we don't got to go through nothing. Come on now. We think that, but I'm here to tell you, those that are really his, you're going to enter through trials and tribulation, but he's with you. He's with you in the fire. He's with you in the water. Amen. If you, he's there. <laughs> he's with us. And so we have to look at that, that word when he says, when you turn again or be converted, it means just that, to change your direction, to go in the opposite direction, Peter. Peter was walking with him, but Peter had so much pride. Mm -hmm. He had pride, and so God had to check him. He had to be sifted. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. And the Bible says in Hebrews that he prays for us. Amen. Amen. He ever lives to intercede for us. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The will of God, the counsel of God. So many people have all kinds of directions they take, but I'm here to tell you, they're going to go through till they line up with truth. If you say you belong to the Lord, he's passionate about getting you free. He is passionate about putting his finger on everything that, that is against him. You will be a miserable believer until you get set free. And you will cycle in evil patterns and bondages. It, it, it will continue to cycle in your life until you let God deal with those. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John 3. Well, I can do whatever I want as a Christian. Really? Okay. First John 3. Let's see what John says about this. Oh, Lord. In verse 4, 1 John 3, 4, it says, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. He said, In sin is lawlessness. He says, You know that he appeared in order to take away sin. And in him, in Jesus, there is no sin. He says, no one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, he said, make sure no one deceives you. Come on now. The one who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. He says, no one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. He said, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. What? A lot of hate in church today, isn't there? A lot of division, a lot of hate, a lot of continual sin in the church. Do they really know this real Jesus? Come on now. He says, for this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother. 
And for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. He says, do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. He says, we know that we have passed out of, he said, out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this, that he, speaking of Jesus, laid down his life for us, that we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Wow. John didn't play. <laughs> John was gutting the church, wasn't he? He's talking to church people here. He's talking to church people that was trampling on the grace of Jesus. They were trampling on the blood as an unholy thing. They thought just because they received him, they could do and live however they wanted. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, look, the devil's using you. That's what he's saying. That's another spirit right there. And so what happens is that when people continue in these bondages, they continue in sin behavior, they get a stronghold. Okay, a stronghold sets in. It's like when you, you tell a lie and you keep telling a lie and you keep telling a lie, then you're living lies. The next thing you know, you have a lying spirit. That's how it works. Strongholds set up in us. And then if you're born into some of these, you have a predisposition to certain evils. You do. It's, it's what you're born into. It's what you've been raised in. It's like your minds get conditioned by your upbringing come on and demons take advantage of our our wrong mindsets so when we have the spirit of truth in us and we walk in truth we walk in the light and the devil can't come in but when we're born in areas of darkness right and so all over the world and here you know people are born into darkness they're born into wrong mindsets and wrong thinking they were raised a certain kind of way and so now that's why we must be renewed in our mind. You know, we can't say, well, that's just how, how my family is. And, you know, that's how our culture is. That's how we were raised. But now I'm in the kingdom. See, I've been translated out of darkness into the light of God. And I have, I have a blueprint here. I have blessings here. I have promises. And, and I have this word that works in every nation in the world. Because Jesus is Lord of the nations. Amen. He's Lord of the nations. And so we have a right to every promise. We are an heir of Christ. Amen. We're an heir. And so let's go to James. These conflicts, they come out of our soul, man. Mm-hmm. But pride is the biggest blocker. This prideful spirit, you know, we have to deal with this Adamic pride. We all do. Come on now. We do. And it's stronger in some people than others, but it's in our nature. It's in the Adamic nature to be independent and to be self-willed and to be selfish and to be prideful. It's just in us to preserve ourselves, right? So everything Jesus taught was deny yourself deny yourself be like me deny yourself take up your cross follow my way you know follow my example and so we went to james right yeah. hallelujah see this the conflicts inside of us is so true that conflict man it's like it is in there and it will fight and cause you to resist the will of god and those deceitful scheming demons they will come and they will just they will just keep talking to you and they just talk to you and chatter and tell you it's okay it don't take all that there's another way you can go narrow is the way come on now narrow don't take the broad path don't take it and you know and don't be deceived because i'm talking to anointed people here you have an anointing you still got to have a right heart you know it's true you can be anointed and gifted and still fall into a lot of sin because you got some issues inside of you that you need to deal with. But pride will come in when you're anointed. If you're not careful, well, I can preach a good sermon and I can do this and I can do that. But yet you're still in fornication. Come on now. Yet you're still over here. You're cheating or you're doing this or you're lying or you're being deceitful. That's not good. Because God says he looks at the heart. He looks at the heart of a man. Amen. 
And so the devil will, the devil will promote you too. Do you know that? The devil promotes Christian people all the time. Well, God opened that door. Really? God opened that door and you got all these issues in your heart. God, God did that for you. God doesn't wink just because you have an anointing. See, the anointing is the Lord. The gifts are the Lord. <laughs> I mean, that's the good part of you. It's the other part. The devil wants to trick you and trap you. That's what he does. He's out to still kill and destroy. Just because we get saved don't mean we're exempt. No, we got a big old target on us now. But as long as we're honest and we let God deal with those things, guess what? He'll deal with it. He's merciful. Amen. He used all kinds of folks in the Bible that had a past. All through the Bible, he used them. But the key was that they repented. The key was that they were honest before God with the issues in their heart. And they repented before God. Amen. So James chapter 3, these conflicts and quarrels of the heart. God wants to deal with the conflict. Amen. It says, let's go to verse uh, 18. Who among you is wise and understanding? He said, let him show by his good behavior, his deeds and gentleness of wisdom. So if you read the Bible, you will see all through the Bible. It's talking about your behavior. That's your, that's your self. That's your flesh. He all through the, he's not talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's perfect in you. <laughs> the spirit man in you is awesome. It's the flesh man. All through the Bible, you're going to deal with your mind. You're going to deal with wrong thinking. You're going to deal with all of those things. Amen. He says, but if you have, look here, bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your heart. He says, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. He said, this wisdom is not that which comes down from above. He said, but it's earthly, natural, it's demonic. He said, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. And so those roots have to be uprooted out of you. Like the word has to be, has to be planted in your heart concerning these things, right? And when the word of God, the seed of God is planted, you'll begin to produce good fruit. Amen. He says, but the wisdom from above, he said, is pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle reasonable full of mercy and good fruits unwavering without hypocrisy that means that it's pure that it's pure your yay is yay come on now your nay is nay it's pure like your heart is pure and peace comes when you when you have conflicts in your heart you don't have no peace i'm here to tell you it's a it's a sad place to be when you have continual conflicts in your heart it steals your peace amen he says, and the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Mm. Then he says in chapter four, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? He says, is not the source your, your pleasures that wage war in your members? He says, you lust and you do not have. He says, so you commit murder. He says, you are envious and you could not obtain. So you fight and quarrel. He says, you do not have because you do not ask. He says, and you ask and you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Then he says to them, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Wow, right? That's the Bible. Or do you think that the scripture speaks of no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. But now looks what he says. But he gives a greater grace. He already knows we got this human nature. That's why he's in Jesus. Come on. He says he gives a greater grace. Therefore, God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God, and guess what? He will draw near to you. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And so he's talking about, and he says, submit therefore to God. you got to yield your will, don't you? you? You could be in the biggest conflict ever, and you hear the Holy, Holy Spirit saying, be quiet. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what I want to say, and I'm going to do self. Mm, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I'm grown. 
I'm grown. I can do what I want. People say that all the time in church. You're not grown at all. You're still immature but a babe. Because guess what? It says in the Bible when Peter was full grown, he was chained by his hands and he was led away to some place he really didn't want to go. His death. He didn't fight that. That's being grown right there to die. You can say you're grown when you die to your flesh. Until then, you're not really grown. Come on now. Help us, Jesus. It's the truth. There's some areas I need to grow up. Come on, let's tell the truth. And you too probably. (laughs) Because we still wrestle with this thing in our will to deny ourselves sometimes, right? But thank God we get an understanding. And we want to be like him. See, that's what he's after. David was a man after God's heart because David would repent. Mm -hmm. He would repent. He would come out of agreement with himself. And then you could see all the things he wrote about himself. And then at the end, it was like, have mercy on me, Father. That's what we have to be, right? And so we're grown when we die. That's the truth. Come on. He's helping us. Ephesians 4, and then we're going to keep on walking here. See, God can deal with these conflicts when we surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to surrender this weekend because we already know we done made a mess of things and we can't fix nothing. Tell the truth, right? Only Jesus can fix us. We can, only he can fix us. We can go to a lot of, and I'm not against because I'm taking counseling courses now. We can go a lot of Christian counseling, but at the end of the day, I still need the Holy Ghost to fix me. I still have to have a supernatural encounter with the spirit of God because without the supernatural power of God, there is no change in any man. Amen. And so Ephesians chapter four, let's go to verse 23 says, well, let's go up here talking about a Christian's walk. It says in verse 20, He says, and they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity and greediness. He's talking to Christians again. He says, but you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life. You see that? He says, you lay aside the old self, lay it aside which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit and that you may be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He says, and then you can put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. He said, lay aside falsehood. He says, speak truth. Each one of you with his neighbor, for we are all members of one another. Be angry, and and he said, and yet do not sin. He says, do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. Now, that word opportunity means you don't give the devil a license, a place, or a door in your life. So that means you have a responsibility to walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility. God gave us a beautiful gift of free will. He could have made everybody robots. That's not what he wanted. He loved us so much. He wanted us to have choice. Isn't that something? He wanted us to choose him. He wanted it bring. It's like an aroma of Jesus comes up to the father when his children are obedient to the word. When his children are obedient to him, it brings him so much joy because he knows they have a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. He gave us that gift right? He gave it to us. And so he says, he says, speak truth to each one another. And then it says in verse 28, remember we talked about when there's a repentance, there's a change. Come on. He says, he who steals much steal no longer. So there must've been thieves in Ephesus. (laughs) There must've been some people that were thieves. Come on now that had a lot of anger issues because these, these are letters to churches. Mm -hmm. He says, but rather he must labor performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with one who has need. He said, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as it is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. 
Then he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be away from you. He said, along with all malice, he said, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. <laughs> and so he's, he's giving them how to walk as a child of God, how to keep the enemy out of your life. Amen. He, he's speaking to us here. He said, don't grieve him. He said, because you were sealed by him. You don't, you don't want to grieve him. You need him in this life. Amen. And so when Christians live in this habitual sin patterns and evil cycles and all of these things, it grieves the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It grieves him. And what happens is when you continue to grieve him, you could be in danger of quenching him. He going to stop talking to you. He just, whew. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, forsake you. But guess what? The Holy Spirit is sensitive. He is a sensitive Mm -hmm. he, he, do, he doesn't intrude on you. You have to invite him. Isn't that wonderful? He's right there ever present. But when we continue to, and, and any time there's strife, discord, and bitterness, he is not there. I'm here to tell you he will, he will get back up out the way. He doesn't, he doesn't work in that. That's against his nature. What is the nature of the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering or temperance, right? Patience, all of that works together. Love, peace, all of those things. Kindness? Kindness is the Holy Spirit? Uh-huh. <laughs> all of those things. But it's a choice sometimes, isn't it? It's a choice, especially when we're in conflicts. That's why we, we've got to uproot all this unforgiveness. All this anger and hatred and bitterness, this stuff, these iniquities that we've been born into, these wrong ways of thinking, amen? Then he's helping us, praise God, because we don't want to give the enemy an opportunity because he will take it. I'm here to tell you. He will take it. So in your book on page 15, let's talk about these uh, open doors, these death structures here. And so those listening, there's many areas of your soul where you got some open doors, Right? Either they were, you were, you inherited just like the doors were open before you were born because your ancestors or your parents opened those doors and you were conceived with open doors. Okay. It's how it works. And, and you're born into something. So a death structure is like a stronghold that is fortified with lies of the enemy and is a resource center that the enemy pulls from in your soul or your mind. And so the word resources means that which is resorted to for aid, support, or supply. And so it's like if you have an offended spirit, the spirit of offense that's in your mind or your heart will speak to you. Demonic chatter. And so someone can be talking across the room, and because you carry the spirit of offense and you, you're angry already, you just know they're talking about you. And they ain't even looking your way. But they could be laughing over there somewhere and you just already made your mind up. I know they're looking at me and they're talking about me. You already got an attitude with somebody you don't even know because you're carrying it. And where did that voice come from? From the resource in you. You give the devil place. You have a resource in there. That means that he's, he's talking to you in your mind. I've had to tell people sometimes in counseling, demons are talking to you. It's plain talk. They're talking to you. You got to squash. You got to squash them. You got to silence those voices. Amen. Because they will get loud. And so they pull from these places. Now, if it's just a spirit in the atmosphere, that's one thing, you know, or you get around somebody and there's a familiar spirit talking. But when you have a stronghold, that place is fortified. That means that the spirit is in there. It's inside of you. And so it's going to talk all day long. It's not just going to be a passing thought out in Walmart because it's in the atmosphere. It's going to be up in you. It's in your house. Come on. And so the, Satan is the father of lies. Okay. He supports and builds his death structures in our hearts with lies. It's a lie you've believed as true. 
You believe the lie of the enemy, you took it in and you meditated on it. James talks or John talks about that. You remember Judas, Satan having put in his heart the thought to betray Jesus and he didn't get rid of that thought and he hanged himself. You know, the thought destroyed him. Come on now. And so that's what I'm talking about. Unhealed places of the soul. These, these are where these things come in. Word curses, trauma. Many people have a lot of post-traumatic stress, traumatic images, those kind of things. They need to be uprooted out of your imagination. Uh-huh. And people say, people will say sometimes, those things are really real. You don't know what it does to my body. Oh, they're real, all right. It's a spirit image. And in the spirit image, you got triggers all through your whole body. It's as if it's real right now happening to you. So I'm not being insensitive, but it is a spiritual problem. Okay? It is spiritual. And we need to deal with it spiritually. If it's dealt with just medically, people put you on medication, all that, to suppress the flesh. But the spirit is still there. And so, thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah. And so he supports and builds it. Word curses, trauma, unhealed areas of the soul, false belief systems. You could, you could be brought up in a false doctrine, false teaching, legalism. That legalistic spirit, come on. Thinking the outside makes you holy. The devil is a liar. The Pharisees thought that too. That's why they were the long, mm, come on now, I'm going to be careful. You know what I'm talking about. It was their outside they thought the outside made them holy, but it was not the outside at all. He says, inside, you're filthy, you're dirty, you're snakes and vipers, whitewashed tombs, dead people. What? They look so holy. Everybody loved them. They had the best seats, the most money. He says, you're, you're, uh -uh. He says, you are not, you're wicked. He said, he, said, he said, you are of your father, the devil. The desire of your father you want to do. Go set and do, you make the big prayers, you do the long prayers, you wear the best whatever on Sunday, you have your Bible, but inside you're dirty and you're filthy and you're wicked. Jesus preached it. Matthew 23, reference. Hallelujah. Religious spirits, Oh. Don't that just upset you? They should upset you too because it's another spirit. And it, tor it torments people in church. It puts Christians in bondage. Religion. There's the one right there. Denominational barriers, poverty, sickness, diseases. All of those things can be a death structure that the enemy will use to draw his lies from and to speak to you. Your body has a mind. Mm-hmm try to fast it speaks to you doesn't it it growls you get a headache give up your coffee you got a headache your body's talking to you uh-huh withdrawals triggers that comes that's the, your body is doing things uh-huh so you're three parts but every three part has a mind it has a will and emotions it's true it is very true and so that's what I'm talking about when you're talking about these, these strongholds here, we need God to deliver us because bondage not just, doesn't just speak to us here, but it pulls our body into sin. And we sin against our body even in fornication, he says. The Bible says that. We make our body sin. Come on. Poverty, sickness, diseases. So your body will talk to you when you're sick. We've all been there. And the body will tell you, you're never going to get healed. You're going to live with this disease forever. You know it's going to kill you. The devil is a liar. It's going to take you out, you know, and then you have all these symptoms going on, right? And, and it's real. You can feel them. You know they're real, but I'm telling you, you got to come out of agreement. You got to come out of agreement with these things. The Bible says that the spirit of a man can sustain him through infirmity, through sickness. It's true. The spirit of a man. Not the soul, because the soul will mess you up. But you've got to be strong in spirit. Amen? You can't give in to the lies of the enemy. So a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you believe the lies, you accept the lies, you will live the lie. That's it's how it works. So a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yeah. 
You are where you are today because of the thought processes. So death structures are different for everyone depending on your life's journey, your experiences, and what lies we have received and believed. And so if you've been brought up and you've been abandoned and rejected as a child, you're going to grow up with that spirit of abandonment and rejection, and you're going to believe that you're a rejected soul. You're going to believe you're not worthy to be loved because maybe a father left you. You know, it's true because you're shaped when you're young like that and you begin, you begin to believe those things, amen? And we know that, that, that Jesus, that the Father, he, he is a father to the fatherless. He adopted us all, amen? amen? He loves us all. But if we believe that we cannot receive love from a father, we will often think we can't receive love from the heavenly father, and he's supernatural. His love ain't like earthly dads. Praise the Lord, right? Or earthly mothers. <laughs> it's not the same. We can't even measure the depths of his love for us, right? But, but when we believe these things, we'll have a hard time. So root issues, iniquities, and must, they must be dismantled with the truth of God's word and the voice of the enemy will be silenced within what people find after a cleansing is a clear mind. Now you got to keep them out. Mm -hmm. The voices get kicked out. The spirits go. They, they have to go because the anointing breaks the yoke and demons leave. And now you got to keep them out with the word of truth. You have to begin to war good warfare yourself. Uh-huh. Come on. And so death structures will cause us to have a wrong perception in life and keep us from the fullness of our potential, and they can be inherited through the bloodline. And so thank God for Jesus. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggles not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world, forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. And so that wrestling is real. Even after you get set free, you have to, res you have to submit to God, resist the devil right? Because the Bible says that when a spirit leaves a man, he roams around in dry places, Jesus says, seeking rest, and he can't find it. Why? Because he wants to come back to the house he left. And when he comes back to that house, he sees it swept and clean and put in order. Guess what? No one's in there. They haven't renewed their mind. They haven't put the word in there, right? They, they, haven't, they haven't built themselves up in the word of God. And so then it says he comes back in, he looks for a way back in. He comes back in and brings some more with him. Mm -hmm. Then you're worse than you were. That's why you have, to, you have to fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to get in your word. And you think, well, I mastered that thing for a season. It's still going to try and come back around. Even Jesus. When Jesus was tempted, the, 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 he won the victory with Satan in the temptation. In Luke 4, you can read all about that. When he was in the wilderness, he won every battle, right, for us. But then it says Satan left him for a more opportune time. For a more opportune time. What? That scripture right there. That tells us that, guess what? He's going to come back around again. Mm -hmm. So you can't let your guard down with that old thing. Mm -mm. You got to make sure that you continue to walk with the Lord. And so let, I'm going to talk about uh, familiar spirits a little bit. This is not in your book, but Proverbs 522 says his own iniquities will capture the wicked and he will be held by the cords of his sin. All right. And so when you're talking about um, you're talking about familiar spirits, I want to kind of shift and talk about that a little bit because Whatever you get set free from, it's been familiar to you. <laughs> it's so true. You got familiar with uh, rejection. You were familiar maybe with that anger. You're familiar with certain things. And even the word familiar means, it means that, that you were kind of friendly with it. It was a part of you. It was a part of your thinking. You know, low self-esteem and, and all those things, especially rejection. And so a familiar spirit... Okay, we have to come out of agreement. And so you know a spirit by its nature, how it makes you feel. So that's one of your biggest testers there in the spirit realm is your feeler. Come on now, your feeler. <laughs> you can discern, you can call it discernment, right? Discerning of spirits. You have the ability to discern spirits because you have the Holy Spirit. 
Mm -hmm. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. They say, well, I don't have that gift. Yes, you do, because you have the Holy Spirit. Now, some people, it might be sharper than others because you've acknowledged the gift. Come on. You've acknowledged Holy Spirit. You, you learn about the Holy Spirit and the fruit, the gifts, all of those things. But everybody, I believe, that has the Holy Spirit can operate in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe it because he is the gift. Amen. And so, you know, a spirit by its nature, how it makes you feel. And so when you get deliverance from something, okay, say it's lust, even you get deliverance from lust, you know, that feeling, you know, your whole body knows that feeling. Come on now. But you've come out. That's right. Nasty. She's a nasty. Yeah. You come out of that. Right. And so you keep yourself, you, be, you learn how to build yourself up in truth. You keep yourself holy. You should be accountable to someone that you can trust. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people are accountable to the wrong people. And guess what? They fall back in again with the person they were supposed to be accountable to. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. we, we counsel Christian people. We know this is true. And so familiar spirits, you have to, you have to guard yourself. They can come through soul ties. Soul tie is when your mind, your will, your emotion, your heart gets tied to somebody in an emotional or intimate relationship. And so you have to break the ties of familiarity. You have to break the soul ties. And we do that in cleansing. We break soul ties that you have. It can many ways people get tied through uh, rejection, soul ties, bitterness. Come on. Grief. We're going to teach about grief tomorrow. Grief, soul ties, fornication, all kinds of soul ties, adulteries. And so sometimes now, unless, of course, you're married, you need to get some good counseling and get both of you need healed. But if you're in relationships that you're coming out of a sinful relationship, you can't just get deliverance and go back into that relationship. Come on now. You got to come. I got to remove yourself from the situation and sometimes the surroundings. There's been people that's had to move from geographical locations to stay free until they get built up and strong enough in the spirit to be able to resist the familiarity, say, of addiction or of those people. It's reality because it'll be, it's familiar to you. And, and that familiarity, until you get built up, it will pull on your flesh. You see, it pulls on the flesh. And so sometimes you have to do that, okay, from maybe uh, from the person, the, the area where they had, you know, they did things they shouldn't have done. They sinned. You physically remove yourself. You cut off toxic negative relationships, okay? You begin to avoid the old waste places. That's like when someone gets freedom of alcoholism and they used to hang out and drink with their buddies. They can't be friends with those buddies anymore. Not if I'm going to stay free of alcohol because it'll pull your soul right back into sin. And so people say, oh, I'm strong enough. I can handle it. I know I got delivered. You're not ready yet. It's a process to build you up. Amen. And to learn your spiritual weapons. And so old waste places associated with the stronghold. Remember, demons are attached to persons, places, and things, right? They're attached to stuff. And so we're talking about familiar spirits can be attached to family heirlooms. Come on now. They can be attached to things. Through the Bible, you see where they took things that were devoted to idolatry. Achan sin. You remember Achan? He took the thing that was devoted to idolatry and he dug a hole and put it under his tent. And it brought a curse. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of those idols. Because it's idolatry before God. And it's not, it's the, the, the wooden thing or whatever, the picture, whatever it is, that doesn't, that has no power, but it's what's attached to the wood. You see, Satan wants to be worshiped. And so all throughout history, you'll see people bowing down to wood. And, and Acts talks about it. He was kind of mocking about their idols, right? They don't have no power. They can't talk. Jeremiah talked about it. Yeah, they don't have power, but it's the spirit on them. The seducing spirit that's on the idols. And so those things you have to clean. We have to clean our house out. 
Mm -hmm. So you got to, you got to ask the Holy Spirit will show you. Cause I'm telling you anything that's dedicated to idolatry, you need to get rid of that because of the familiar spirit that's attached to those things. You want to stay free. You got to do it. Jesus said, have no other gods before me. That's what he said. Love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love me. He says, you don't need all those things. He says, you have me, the true and living God. Amen. And so many times we can't fight our battles and we fall in, um, we lose courage in a battle. We'll lose courage in spiritual warfare and strength because we have idols. All throughout the children of Israel, when they would go to battle, when, the, when God was number one, and they were really serving God, and they didn't have any idols, they didn't touch nothing, take nothing, all that stuff, they could, they could stand in the midst of their enemies and win. Uh -huh, but, every, but their hearts would cower in fear when they were in sin. It's so true today. Even today, we cower in fear when we live like this. Amen? And the enemy steals our strength is what he does. So old relationships that always bring up the past to you. Okay, you got to cut them off, separate until you're healed and strong enough to stand in righteousness. That's when sometimes, you know, those people in the world that you hang out with, you know, now you're, it's not, and we pray for people to be saved, but to have an intimate relationship with people that pull you back into sin, you can't live holy like that. You can't, you can't walk with the Lord that way. You see what I'm saying? And so you got to separate until you're healed. And so we know that they'll also familiar spirits worked in the unredeemed family member. That word familiar spirit means family household servant. Mm -hmm. Household servant. So in the Bible, when you see the word house, he's speaking of generations. Not just about your natural house. Not even about you. He's speaking about a lineage here. And so... Family household servants, they are, they are assigned to keep family bondages passed down. That is a familiar spirit's assignment. Keep them in bondage. Keep them in bondage. Enslave their children. Enslave the grandchildren. Keep, they want to stay in family lines, okay? So demonic cycles, demons create and manipulate strongholds. They, they, they create and manipulate strongholds in the minds to tempt you to walk around the same mountain over and over again. Mm -hmm. They want you to do that because you're not, you're not going to be able to walk in your purpose because you keep going around and around and around. Here we go again. And time just keeps on passing, right? And so after freedom, the soul has to be filled with the word of God, the Holy Spirit, Okay, and if you come out of toxic relationships, if you don't heal, guess what? You're going right back into another one. It's going to happen. You got to be healed in the heart. That's why people fall back into the same thing. They're like, man, I didn't even see that coming. Boom, there it is. They fall right back in. Thank God for Jesus. See, he's bringing revelation to you. And so until you're free, like spirits will attract. And what's sad is that things can be hidden and concealed to you until you're in the relationship. Boom, there it is. So now you got to deal with it. Because especially if now you're in his covenant relationship, that stuff was there all the time, but you never saw it. Till you get in it, right? Come on now, we've all been there, right? And so you got to deal with the enemies. And familiar spirits know if you're healed or not. And so they will pull you into cycles and patterns. And when you find yourself in a cycle and a pattern, you know you're not yet healed. You just, you got some places still. You got some, you got some easy places for the enemy to come in. Some doors are still cracked. And you could say that you still have some, some areas where you just need to, need God to touch. Amen. That's not condemnation. That's like, Lord, I see this cycle. It can be a cycle in your finances. It can be many different kinds of cycles, right? Cycles of grief or cycles of suffering, uh, cycles, whenever it's demonic cycles, God, we're not supposed to live in a cycle mm -hmm. unless it's God and we're walking with the Lord and there's times and seasons of the Lord, but that's not, that's not evil. Come on. So you got to beware of sympathetic witchcraft when you're being healed, okay? 
And so it's false compassion. Sympathetic witchcraft is very real. Some, God did not sanction us to have mercy on the devil. <laughs> we can't have sympathy for evil. <laughs> Come on. We can't do it. But we do it sometimes because we have the fear of man, man-pleasing spirit, all these things, right? And we want to be accepted. We have rejection, so we just accept anything. No, no, no. Not no more. Mm -mm, not no more. And so you got to be aware of sympathetic witchcraft. It's false compassion. It's unsanctified mercy. And when you have unsanctified mercy, mercy with others in bondage or of like spirit. Mm -hmm. I hear people say, well, you know, the Lord knows my heart. And they're living this kind of way. I'm like, yeah, and he sees your behavior too. It don't line up. It doesn't line up. Come on now. False compassion. You, you, can't, you can't yield to the enemy. You can't have compassion. If Jesus didn't have compassion on it, neither should you. So you must remember the cost of the relationship when familiar spirits speak to you and try to get you to look back. Jesus says in Luke 9, 62, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven, right? So you can't be looking back there like that. You got to move forward with the Lord. God always calls his people forward. Amen. Come out of your past. Come on. Come out of there. Walk forward with me. And so you have to remember that a familiar spirit always speaks to your past. Okay. He's going to pull on your soul to the past. Mm hmm. It's true. Only Jesus is the finisher of you. Demons learn things. Familiar spirits learn families. They speak out of your past. You must remember the cost of the relationship, the price you paid by a loss of your peace, maybe your health, your finances. Many people, when you're, you have to, if you're in a relationship and you're believing God to deliver, to heal, maybe it's a spouse or something like that, God, God will work with your mate. He will work with your spouse. But you have to get healed and stay in a seated place. <laughs> with Christ <laughs> you have to stay seated you can't be pulled down in here into the warfare because it's going to steal your peace it may be even your cause health issues it's true but you can you can stay seated if God sanctioned that marriage come on now if, if God if you know God said it then you fight you fight but you fight a spiritual battle some of the best marriages today went through hell and conflict and God uses them mightily. Come on now. But we don't have, we're not, con we're not condemning anyone. We know that. But I'm talking about familiar spirits today. I'm talking about that. Sympathetic witchcraft. Remember the cost of that relationship. That's how you see the soul ties and those familiar spirits that pull those people back into abusive relationships. God called us to have peace. He never wants us to be walked on or to be abused by anybody, right? He gave us a free will. Why does man think they can take that from us? Hmm. God gave it to me. So I should have a voice. Hello. <laughs> right? It's true. And my voice should line up with the word, but nobody should control another man's spirit or woman's spirit. We shouldn't control one another. Amen. And so those spirits will do that. They'll pull you back into toxic relationships. Help us, Jesus. And so you got to remember that some people can't get healed because they're still in the war. Instead of being seated with Christ, Ephesians 2 says that I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means I have to die to myself in order to do this, right? You have to die to some things. Hmm. You can't be pulled into bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment in that relationship. You've got to be healed, release those spirits, and, and you don't give no place to the devil. <laughs> you, you can live like that. It, 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 the Jesus will help you. The Holy Spirit can help you live and stay seated in a place of victory over warfare. Mm -hmm. You know when he snags you into warfare because you feel defeated. 
you feel defeated, you feel like it can never change, nothing's ever going to change, and you, and you depression comes, oppression comes, come on now, you sorrow of heart, all these things begin to come, and the devil has painted this terrible picture of defeat to you. And it's like, it's like when Elijah went and hid in a cave, and he saw what Jezebel the witch spoke. Even though he had a great victory, powerful victory everything that the man did God everything he said God did because he heard from God he spoke it God moved all through his life it was powerful all those chapters and then he gets to one word curse mm -hmm. one word curse is spoken and then he goes and hides in a cave and wants to die and gets depressed I'm gonna kill myself just just kill me God there ain't nobody else left I mean here he's saying all this stuff going on but one of the versions says that, that Elijah saw what she said. And the word, um, he's, the evil woman sends a message to him, a messenger of Satan. It was a spirit, y'all. It was a spirit. It was wind. It was the word that she spoke. It was a curse, and it came out of her mouth with the spirit on it, and it came, and it got in his psyche. See, that's what the devil does. He manipulates our mind. He got, he got in his mind. And then he runs and hides in a cave from God and from his enemy. I mean, if you can, you can slay 450 prophets of Baal, evil prophets, and call fire down from heaven, one word, that was a high-level witchcraft operating against this man, against the prophet. You see that? And he went and hid because... He believed the report of the enemy. See, when we believe the report of the enemy, the enemy's going to have his way with us. He's coming. And he's going to do what we have believed in our heart. So we can't come in agreement with things that don't line up with the will of God and what God has spoken. Amen? Because that's what he does. He is a master manipulator. Satan accuser and manipulator of our minds and so familiar spirits are attached to monitoring spirits what is that monitoring spirits observe and do surveillance on you you mean they can see what goes on behind closed doors oh yes they can we can act one way in church but we can go home and guess what those surveillance is going on they know what goes on behind closed doors, and they'll use that against us to accuse us, come on now, to tear us down, guilt, condemnation, everything else. They know they surveillance. They report back. They report back to familiar spirits. There is a network of demonic activity over your purpose. It's true. A whole network. <laughs> A whole network. You're that, you're that important to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're that important. Paul said if there's a hand-to-hand -hand fight. He said, he said this is, you're not wrestling with each other. He said there's a, whole, there's a whole structure against your purpose. See, you were put in the earth for a purpose. Your marriage has a purpose. Your, your serving has a purpose. Your life, your children have purpose. And so Satan always wants to come in and continue to traffic and to steal our seed. Mm-hmm. He's always after the seed. And so a familiar spirit, they'll always remind you to, they look for your triggers because they've been monitoring. They already know your weak spots. <laughs> they already know if he just comes home, brings you a little flower that you're going to melt. He might beat you up tomorrow. Come on. Tell the truth. They know your triggers. They know your weaknesses. They know the things that cause you to bend up underneath these strongholds. You have to be wise and discerning about that. You have to come out of those. You've got to come out of that behavior. you got to know you're, you're better than that. Amen. God created you for a purpose. Uh-huh. Come on now. But that's what a familiar spirit does. That's what they know. They know that. And demons talk to people. Just like they chatter in our minds sometimes and, and get on your shoulder and talk to you. As you know, the little cartoons is really, really real. 
they, they just float around. They're a spirit. They float around the atmosphere. That's how come you can walk in a place and all of a sudden you feel some kind of way. You're like, I felt just fine until I walked up in here. <laughs> all of a sudden you're feeling some kind of way. Your mind's thinking terrible things that you haven't thought about forever. And you know you've been delivered, but you walked up in an atmosphere that's contaminated. So don't think that's you. That's something going on in the atmosphere. That's why you got to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus, right? But see, that's a part of their manipulation. That's a part of them pulling you back into some things. Come on. And so that's what they do. They manipulate minds. Okay? And so a familiar spirit will appeal to your flesh man. Okay? You got to remember that. They appeal to your flesh, man. They know your wounded places already. They know what happened to you. They were there doing it. They were there helping. They were there. Come on now. They work together. So they appeal to your flesh, man. They do not, not the evil circumstances it brought you up under. See, it'll pull you on your flesh. Mm -hmm. Just like with lust or pornography. It pulls on your flesh man to fall back into that. But he's, he's not going to remind you of how guilty and shameful and dirty you feel after. He ain't going to tell you that. You don't even think about that. Come on. It's how the devil works, see. You have to understand that he manipulates the mind, pulls on the flesh, and then he uses you for evil and he brings everything else back on you. Cycles. And so familiar spirits will recall the sensual appetites of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. All of those things come out of what? The world, right? The spirit of the world. They work in that uh, atmosphere. They recall seasons of trauma to you. They cause you to live in an event of the past, sowing old leaven into today. See? So familiar spirit is like, because remember, the resource is the unhealed pain. And so the demons, it's like they pull out of that place. Mm -hmm. It's the root. They pull out of that. They, there's, there's ammunition for them there. There's resources that they can use against you to sabotage your peace and to keep you from moving forward and being who God called you to be. And so it's like they'll reach in and they'll pull out that leaven and they throw it into your today. Over and over again, the devil is a liar. So they speak through these places that are not crucified or healed. Okay, you must forgive. Unforgiveness is a huge door for the cycles. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. So if your soul is not healed, familiar spirits have leverage on the heart string. That's how you know. When you fall again into something, there's some leverage there. There's something he has that he can use because Satan is a legalist. So you have to look and say, what lie did I believe? What kind of suggestion did he give me that I took the bait? <laughs> because he can just bait you. He knows he can only throw bait to you because he can't have you. You belong to the Lord. But if he can bait you and get you to take the bait, you will fall. And then here comes all of his other little friends. That's how he works. Okay? And so he has leverage on the heartstrings, cycles of dysfunction, hindrances, roadblocks, snares, etc. to cause a victim to be defeated. He wants you to feel defeated. Okay? And so um, I believe Derek Prince said it real well about a curse is like a long hook. You know, you just walk and you're just doing so good and all of a sudden you think you've mastered this thing and all of a sudden it just, boom, hooks you and, and pulls you backwards. That's how you know it's still there. Okay? Familiar spirits will cause you to fall back into the same relationships. Guess what else? The same kind of churches. <laughs> oh, because you made evil judgments and you've not been healed from former church hurt. Come on now. And so Christians recycle all the time. 
recycling saints all the time. And yes, God does take us into other pastures sometimes. He does that. If he leads you, that's great. But if you're just cycling here and there and everywhere, then there's an issue. Come on now. They cycle back into the same kind of churches under the same kind of pastor or the same kind of boss. You know how many people leave a job because of their boss and they find themselves, boom, I'm right back with the same kind of boss. Something is, that's a familiar spirit. That's an assignment. Yeah, we've made judgments. Mm -hmm. We've not been, we've not learned to submit to authority. Come on now. Oh boy. We've cursed our bosses and we're going to keep getting the same kind of bosses till we repent from that. Vagabond job history is real, real today. Just vagabond, uproot and going here and chasing the money. God says, plant yourself and I can raise you up and promote you. But people just jump and jump and jump and jump. That's not the will of the Lord. That's not stable. It's not stability. Same boss, friendships, etc. The same kind of friends. I didn't know they were like that. Well, what kind of friend have you been? Come on now. Ouch, right? It's true because, you know, he says when, you, when you're trying to get that, um, get that little speck out, you got this big beam sticking out of your eyeball. Jesus preached that. Yes, he did. Jesus did. <laughs> he said, get it out. Then you can see clearly to help your friend. Come on. <laughs> so you must be wise and discern the fruit. Discern the fruit, right? I had to discern the fruit of that Jezebel spirit that was after me most of my life, really my whole life. And you kept coming up under that because you grew up under it and then you come up under it and here it is again and again, every place you go, Jezebel is there. Hmm. So you have to deal with those things, right? It's spiritual. It's not natural. It is a spiritual principle. So you got to clean that stuff out. You got to get free of those things. Familiar spirits work legally through our speech. Mm. Another area. I should have numbered these, but I'll give them to you real quick. Number one was um, familiar spirits operate in soul ties. That's number one. Number two was familiar spirits are attached to monitoring spirits. And they're always going to appeal to your flesh. And number three was familiar spirits will recall sensual appetites of the flesh. And number four is familiar spirits work through, work legally, speak legally even through bitter root judgments. That means they have a right to speak these things to you because of your judgments you have made. Oh boy. Bitter root judgments, unforgiveness, inner vows. All because you are not healed in the soul. People speak a lot of things out of the soul, out of bitterness, judgments, right? Self-sabotage comes that way. James 1.13 says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. He himself does not tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is carried away in his imagination, in your mind. Because he's not picking your body up and taking you nowhere. <laughs> You're carried away right here. Your thought goes somewhere. I tell people, you need to pay attention to what you're thinking about. Mm. That'll tell you a lot about your heart. Where's your mind go? Daydreaming, fantasies. Come on. So they're carried away and enticed by his own lust. And then when lust has, um, when lust has conceived, it brings birth to, birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings what? Death. Some area of you die somewhere. Something in you dies. Even, even fornication, adultery, loss of soul, alcoholism. You lose your mind, drug addictions. Your piece of you dies. Come on now. Loss of soul is what that means. It gives birth to sin, and sin is accomplished. It brings death. He says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So the unhealed soul is often fragmented. It can be detached isolated in the spirit realm and the enemy fortifies the unhealed soul with a defensive wall pride okay a lot of prideful people are broken people 
It's true. It's a defensive wall because they don't want to be hurt again, right? And so, the, and it can be, it can draw the victims backwards. John eight forty four. We talked about the resource center. Behind emotional pain, many times is a spirit of bondage. It's true. So people need inner healing, but they also need deliverance. It works together, healing and deliverance. And people need deliverance and their bodies need healed. You see how it's all connected? So inner healing is very, very important. So is deliverance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It works together. And then for your body to be healed, many times you need the deliverance. So it's all connected. You see that? And so... You know a spirit by its nature. I hear echo. <laughs> and so we talked about James 3. Renewed mind is a healed mind. Okay? So when your mind is renewed, it's healed. And when you have a healed mind, you don't take the bait of Satan. When you're healed and you're secure in your identity in Christ, rejection can't come in. It's wonderful. Fear of man, whatever. You live for Jesus. You're not going to please man. You're going to please the Lord. Amen. But you have to be healed to be like that. And in order to forgive, you need to be healed because when you, when you can't forgive, it's because you're, you got some unforgiveness yourself. You got some broken places. You're easily offended. You got a, you got an unhealed soul. It's true. And if, and if it's how it works and, and you're, cause you're all connected. So you need to take time to heal. Refuse to go back and get entangled again. That's how you keep out those familiar spirits. You refuse it. You stand in your authority in Christ, right? In Christ. Not in your soul. Not in an attitude. You can go back in a fleshly attitude. You're going to fall right back up under that. But if you go in the spirit, mm -hmm, you will not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. You walk in the spirit. You go in the spirit. You keep the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And you will not be entangled again. Toxic people fill the soul with more contamination. It's true. A toxic, toxic people, right? Because their soul is not healed. It's, it's already contaminated. And so they will fill the soul with more contamination. That's how people get addictions and all kinds of things because there's so much toxin in there, spiritual toxin. And so they fill it with false comfort. It can be drugs. It can be many things, fantasy, escaping into all kinds of things, alcohol, whatever it is, perversions, right? They're trying to fill that place, but it doesn't work. It just brings in more, more toxin in there, more contamination. Fortifying the sensual desires and lies of the enemy. So that means bondage is increased in this kind of, this kind of heart. Bondage gets more. So these will all hinder the renewal process. It's really hard for people to renew their mind when their mind is just all over the place. Come on. They used to tell you growing up because they didn't teach you that Christians need deliverance where I went to church. So they just tell you, read the Bible more. You ain't praying enough. You're not really saved. So, boy, you're really condemned. So every, every Sunday you want to get saved again because you know you're going to go to hell for real because you can't live right. It's like you read the Bible, but you can't live the Bible. But nobody told us we needed deliverance <laughs> because they told us Christians don't have demons. Mm. I know, right? <laughs> we have oppression. It happens. We get oppressed and we need free. Hallelujah. And so thank God for revelation today. And he's freeing God. If God is freeing his people. And so God desires your heart to be whole. He wants all of you. You know how he says, love me with your whole heart, yeah. that deep intimacy. Yeah. It's really difficult when you have deep insecurities. Yeah. It's like one day you're in, one day you're out. Yeah. One day you feel worthy enough to get in God's presence, and the next day you're like, I, I, I'm too dirty to go in there. I'm this. You know, yeah. your, your heart, uh, the heart is deceitful. Yeah. It's true. 
and you, you want to walk in the spirit, but it's difficult when you have all these issues and wounds in the heart, wrong beliefs about yourself. This book in there talks about a, self, a, a healthy self-image. You know, we got to have that to be able to be in the presence of the Lord. We, have to, we know that our own righteousness is filthy, but we have to know he loves us the way we are. Amen? And he's working in us wholeness. Hallelujah. I come to him through the blood. He will never deny the blood. And so Jesus said in Matthew 22, I'm almost done, 37. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Oh, I got number five, and then I'm done. <laughs> Can we do one more? <laughs> this is what I really like. <laughs> so familiar spirits work in religion. Oh, Lord, I got to go there. That's the last one. <laughs> So familiar spirits work in religion, a lot of works, but no real fruit. Okay. Familiar spirit is like, I would say, I know witchcraft is big in America, but religion, religion. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's number one myself. It's everywhere on every corner. Come on. So familiar spirits work in religion, a lot of works, but no real fruit. They do things in the name of Jesus, but are not yoked with him in spirit. Okay. It's hypocrisy feeds its strength. A hypocritical spirit. Hypocrisy feeds its strength. The one in bondage to its control. So the one that is that a familiar spirit of religion is in their life. The more hypocrisy they do, the stronger the spirit becomes. All right, is real. And so outward works, but inward the heart is far from Jesus. Outward works. Come on now, think about the church. Outward works. And we need to do good works, right? But I'm talking about doing a lot of things in the name of Jesus, but not living like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. It says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? Let's go to Isaiah 29. Because we got to watch that because in America, religion is real. That spirit is strong. Come on now. We need an intimate relationship with Jesus. We need to walk like the king, love uh, like the king. Mm -hmm. Religious spirits don't have love for anything. 29, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Then the Lord said, because his people draw near with their word, with mere words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by, it says rote, which means memory. Hmm. Think about that. He says, they honor me. They draw near with their words, honor me with lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me. He says, and their reverence for me consists of traditions learned by memory. Rituals. I can quote a thousand scriptures, but you can't live two. I know, I know the whole chapter. I can recite the whole Bible. But I'm full of hate and bitterness and unforgiveness. Pride. Jesus is speaking. He said it in Matthew 15, 18. He quote this himself. People honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from him. You see what I'm saying? God always wants the heart, y'all. He wants us. He wants our heart. All this outward stuff. Do you know works you do in religion without the heart and love of Christ burns up? Works we do in the church for selfish ambition burns up. There's a righteous judgment coming for us. Did he tell you to do it? Or are you doing it to be somebody? Selfish ambition. Are you doing it out of, out of your rejection? Trying to prove yourself. 
I got to prove I'm anointed. Burn up works. Burn up. It'll all burn up because it has to be done because the Lord said, that's my will for you. You see what I'm saying? Woo-wee. It makes us test our works, don't it? It makes us look at that. It makes us look and see, did God tell me to do this or am I doing it because I can? No, no, no. That's presumption. We've been teaching about the sin of presumption. It's, I'm telling you all, it's real. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so people are compliant with their mouth, okay? You ever need somebody like that where they'll maybe say to you, it could be like even your child, you know, you tell them to do something, they'll be like, uh, yes, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. But inside, they're, mm, I ain't going to do it. As soon as mom leaves the house, I'm going to go play my video game. Come on now. Yes, ma'am, you come home, it's, the trash is still there. Everything is still, and the dishes ain't done. I thought you said you were going to do it. They were compliant with their mouth, but their heart was not in obedience. Come on now. Do it in church all the time. Compliant with their mouth, but their heart is not in agreement with the words. Religious spirits, fruit is hypocrisy, legalism, formalism, and works. They make you focus on the outward with little concern of inward purity. See, a religious spirit will use you and work you like a Hebrew slave and not care how dirty you are inside. Tell the truth. They'll work you, work you, work you, and let you go sin and keep working you. But not tell you what sin is. But it's reality in the church. They make you focus on the outward with little concern about inward purity. Relig familiar spirits of religion. Assignment is to keep you from fulfilling the real purpose of God and the great commission of Jesus. Great commission of Jesus is what God is after. Toiling without rest or peace and you have no joy. So when you're doing works of religion, you toil. You don't have any peace or rest and there is no joy in it. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. See, the joy of the Lord, the loving Jesus and walking with him brings me joy. Being obedient brings me joy. Amen. We don't, we don't go around looking for work. No, no, no. We obey the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. A familiar spirit of religion will keep you from your sonship. Galatians 3. See, we're saved by grace. You'll never be good enough to please God. You can forget it. Your righteousness is filthiness to God. Your own righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood, right? Amen. We need the blood. Amen. Even after you get saved. Come on now. Amen. Repentance is a lifestyle up in here. Because if we get callous, go to Galatians 3. If we get callous and we think we don't have to repent, our heart gets hard there. That's how people get reprobated. Apostasy, all of those things, those strongholds come in because people don't repent. In Galatians chapter 3, faith brings righteousness. Verse 1, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? He said, are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed in, it was in vain? He says, so then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's by faith and grace. We can't work it. And so we can't change people, make people look a certain kind of way on the outside and their inside is not right. I believe when we have the spirit of God and we have a spirit led life, he's going to talk to me. He's going to tell me, hey, you know, he's going to change me on the outside what he desires me to be like. We can't control other people and make doctrines out of long hair and come on now. You're not holy unless you, unless you let your hair go long. Nothing wrong. Long hair is beautiful. But we don't make people. We don't, make, we don't have a right to control another person's spirit. God gave us a free will. 
Hallelujah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Because the kingdom of God is diverse. <laughs> it's diverse. He likes diversity. Yes, he does, because he saved us all. Amen. Hallelujah. So 2 Timothy 3, 7, apostasy curse comes in when, with this religious spirit. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. It will, this is what it does. It will try to obstruct the way of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, you're saved by grace. Hey, hallelujah, right? And I always try to figure that out. You know, God saved them the way they were. Spirit of God came in them. The supernatural power of God comes in a person's spirit, causes them to be one with the Lord. And then man comes in and tries to make them change everything about themselves. Let the spirit of God work in them. Amen. Let them work because you're, you're, put, you're strapping them down and you don't know what God's going to do with them, where he's going to take them. Come on now. How many people they're assigned to? Because I really believe our, our spiritual identity, we are assigned to souls. Our identity, we're connected to souls and people and people groups. Come on. And so that spirit will block the work of the Holy Spirit's ministry. Because it, t it thinks it, it is the Holy Spirit. Okay. It hinders the progress of the church. This is what this familiar spirit of religion does. Blocks the work of the Holy Spirit. Hinders the progress of the church. Conforms you into a compromising believer with no power. Because he ain't there no more. And so you have no spiritual growth. Or, and you cycle backwards. Because religion cannot keep you. <laughs> because you're trying to be kept by the flesh. True. Religion cannot keep you. Only a personal relationship with God can keep you. With Jesus. His spirit keeps us. And so when we try like Galatians. And when we try to be perfect or to find God through this outward expression or whatever, we're going to fall and God will make sure we fall. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're saved by grace and faith. It's not of any works of our own. You can't earn it. You can't make it. You can't look right. You can't be right. It's by faith. Someone really needs us tonight. Cause we, I'm telling you what we, we make all kinds of doctrines out of things. It's true. Rules, regulation, do's and don'ts, no relationship. They don't even know how to hear the Lord yet. They don't even know. They can't hear the voice of God because they got all this other stuff going on, all this condemnation and accusation and judgments and all these things put on them. And they can't even hear the Lord. Come on. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and as strangers, they will not follow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God in closing God's helping us. So we have to renew our mind with the word and with a new action after this weekend. A new action. Doesn't matter where you got to go home to. It doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter. The spirit of God is with you. <laughs> and guess what? He is for you. Mm-hmm. He's for you. Hallelujah. So you check your relationships, positive and negative. Do your relationships point you upward to Christ? They should. You got to check your faith walk. Are you challenging your flesh to obey Jesus? Or do you just give in passively? Now, when bondage leaves, you're going to have a strength that you never had before. Yeah, you get a new strength after, the, after, after your deliverance. There's a power. I mean, there's a power that comes over you. Amen? The Holy Ghost will help you. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just let that word just seal in your hearts tonight. Amen? God is able. Let's stand up to our feet. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that we will not be manipulated by the enemy. No matter what kind of package it comes in. Come on now. So, Father, we thank you right now for your grace. Hallelujah. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father God, I ask that you would bless these, your people and those that listen, that the word would go deep down into their heart, Father. And even on tonight, as they leave this place, Father God, I thank you for the people that they're going to, they're going to release, Father God, they're going to forgive, Lord God, even now they're forgiving them and they're releasing them. 
I just thank you, Father, for the grace. And even as you leave tonight, if there's anybody you need to uh, write a letter to to release and forgive, you need to do that. If there's somebody in your heart or in your spirit, I, I don't care who it is, that you know agitates you, it irritates you, that means you're offended, okay? Agitation, irritation, anger, you need to write a letter to them and release them. And we're going we're gonna to rip those letters up tomorrow and forgive people. It's very important. It brings, it's going to bring some inner healing and release to you. And even yourself, if you're angry with yourself and you have unforgiveness toward yourself or, or maybe there's some things you want to get free from, you know, renounce those things. Begin to come out of agreement with the lies of the enemy because he has manipulated your mind long enough. Amen. And so, Father, we cover them in the blood of Jesus even as they leave this place. I thank you that you fill this place, Father, with your healing, your deliverance, your miracles. Father, that everything is uprooted that needs to be uprooted, that every hidden thing would be exposed in their heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory, Father, for everything that you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah.